I'm gonna get made into a country music superstar in 24 hours. I live in Nashville, Tennessee, which is known to many as the home of country music. It's a place where country stars are minted every day, or depending on who you ask, where they're manufactured off an assembly line making blah radio music. But either way, I've lived here for about a year and somehow I'm not a country star yet. I mean, granted, I'm not trying to become one. I review the music, but hey, if there's an assembly line here, I'd like to be manufactured Nashville. I'm on the beat. So in today's video, I'm going to spend one entire day trying to become a country star. I have 24 hours to go from a nobody to someone with a smash hit single, and I'm calling in the experts to help. As I see it, there are three main things that I need. I need a hit song, I need a new look, and then I'm going to need some great content. Step one, I need a hit song, which means I need to work with a hit songwriter, which means I'm going for one of the biggest ones that there is. Ernest. So I headed down to Music Row to the Big Loud building to check out Ern's Cadillac Music, which is his own publishing venture there. Now we only had about an hour to shoot because Ernest is one of the most in-demand people in country music right now. And you may know him for his hit song, Flower Shops. Mr. I take your but he's also one of the writers of songs like Breaking Up Was Easy in the 90s, One Mississippi, Son of a Sinner, and then a bunch of Morgan Wallen songs including Heartless, Wasted on You, You Proof, and This Bar. And with setting up cameras and stuff, we technically only had about 45 minutes to write a song, and I was pretty damn nervous, so I just jumped right into it. Do you want to hear some of my titles and you can tell me if yeah. any of them have any potential? Yes. One is about uh, some sad person binging TV episodes after a breakup, and it's called I Had a Series of Episodes Getting Over You. Um, I had one about a drunk barber, like your barber is drunk, and it's called Faded. Um, <laughs> weapons of Mass Depression, that was my thought about phones. Um, it's cheaper to keep her, about some like dude on his fourth trophy wife, and yeah. he's like gonna die soon anyway, so he's like, let's not get a divorce. Yeah, like, yeah. Let's... It's cheaper to keep her, it's harder to leave. I get to thinking about all the money it's gonna cost me. Yeah. Ernest had a pretty unbelievable ability to just riff on literally anything I said. I could give him a word and he would spit out a whole melody around that word almost instantaneously. Yeah. It's cheaper to keep her. Okay. Uh, I'm too outlaw for my in-laws. Um, that's hard. Hey, that's awesome. <laughs> Ultimately, we decided I needed to relate to the song, at least to some extent. In this, like, theoretical setup, I'm becoming a country star. Do you want to be too outlaw for your in-laws? That doesn't feel right. <laughs> I, don't, I don't get that. <laughs> it doesn't, it does. You're too in-law for your outlaws. I know, that's how I feel. <laughs> the very first one you said, too, got me going. Oh, a series of episodes. Um, <laughs> that sounds like you. Yeah. <laughs> Where, I, in my mind, this was something about like, you're, you're in a breakup, it's like I cried when like Jim and Pam finally found their first kiss and I threw the remote when like... Got no sooner had I said the idea that without missing a beat, Ernest started playing what came into his mind. Had a series of episodes Yes. I'm trying to let you go Watching a week's worth of Mexico go And we settled on series of episodes. A future TV breakup anthem for the ages. Wow, you're very fast. That's kind of my bit. Okay. You just like go into it and you're like, see what sticks. Yeah, and then like you will go back, you can go through the recording. And that's what, anytime I start, like my guys have learned, if I start doing that, they just get their phone out and start voice noting. Now I actually really felt comfortable with this part of the process from my time in the magazine industry, where a big part of your job is sort of throwing stuff at the wall and seeing what sticks, whether you're talking about headlines or captions or reorganizing paragraphs in a story. A big part of journalism is being willing to edit and get edited and so I kind of felt comfortable doing this and I don't know maybe too comfortable for someone on his first co-write judging from Ernest's facial expressions no I'm here letting go but I know it's good we just have to there needs to be one more piece of connected tissue to let like so for the next hour we went into a whole gamut of TV references the vast majority of which didn't make the song just another word that's good is like somehow like remote or control or like now uh I, got, I still got that controller in my hand pause and bring in Turn it up, um. turning it down. <laughs> yeah, he's going to all the buttons. <laughs> Look at that. Mute, pip. Um, <laughs> like, Record. Yeah. 
But eventually we had our epiphany moment where the whole song kind of came together. I really like the opening couple. I've had a series of episodes trying to let you go. The day that I got in Texaco. More like I'm stuck in a season. I'm in a- mm, I'm stuck in a season of- Keep watching Survivor Mexico. Stuck in a season of- I'm stuck in a never ending season of Survivor Mexico. I'm stuck in a never ending season of Survivor Mexico. Yes. She left him in Mexico and he's at the beach. Staying in his room, he doesn't even want to go to the beach. So he's like, just curled up in his resort room watching Netflix. Yes, <laughs> yes, okay. Um, <laughs> now clarifying the storyline of this song really helped the rest of the writing process flow easily. We knew that it was sort of sad and humorous. We knew that it was at the beach and we knew we wanted to bring in a lot of TV references. Honestly, ideas for lyrics were not an issue. We had more than we needed. What else? This show like, is hey, girl, Friends, I The Office. Girl. Um, um, Cause I'm here in my room. I'm, yeah. In this, in, in room, room 422. 422. Yeah, yeah. here. This game show was meant to lose. Oh no, no, no. Oh, but I'm clinging to this remote. Oh, and I'm and yeah, I'm watch, watching The Office once again. We ain't Jim, we ain't. Yeah, I ain't Jim, and you ain't Pam. Yeah. Man. Climb that wall and get over you. <laughs> oh, not that wall. <laughs> That's crazy. Surfing cha channel, surfing while you're out in the blue. Um, channel surfing light, channel surfing light, surfing while you're out in the blue. It was more culling them down into something and figuring out the flow of the song. I'm channel surfing, and you're catching a wave by the deep, deep blue. I think you uh -huh. can. Oh, uh, or then you do with somebody, uh, somebody new. I'm channel surfing, and you're out catching waves in the deep, deep blue. There you go. With somebody new. That's why I'm sitting here having me a series of episodes. And in general, I was surprised how much actual lyrical input I was allowed to have. Although I feel like 99.9% .9 of the flow of the song was earnest. He can just hear melodies that I haven't even thought to think of. We also decided it would be funny to have some kind of spoken word elements throughout the song, just for the humor. Uh, yeah, it could change. It could be like a Shania thing. Like the yeah. next line is like, uh, uh, and Judge Judy's on for like the fifth time. Like, you know, yeah. it, it, it ain't showered in days. She chose Pilot P. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> she, Luke P's only 5'6. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, guess I'll watch Beat Bobby Flay. <laughs> or like, yeah, yeah, like yeah, get um, kind of hungry uh, watching uh, Bobby Flay. Man, I ain't ate a shower in days. I'm tired of watching Bobby Flay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes, it's so depressing. <laughs> Uh, Bars. I'm tired of watching oh, yeah. play. But I'm having me a series of episodes. Honestly, <laughs> I love it. And then honestly, our time ran out. That's exciting. Sick, dude. That was easy. And just like Ernest said, later on, I was able to go look at our footage and sort of create a Frankenstein demo of what we had put together. So with my debut single mostly locked in, it was time for the next part of our journey, which is to figure out how to look like a country star because I was sitting there in head to toe Old Navy, looking more like a crew member than the guy on stage. And so I paid a visit to Amy Georgioulis, the director of style and image at Big Loud. She has like a whole bunker of racks of clothes and a whole hair and makeup studio and all of these style options pulled for all the various artists on the Big Loud roster. To be fun for the video, she even made me a little section of her style closet. Even in Futura in green, I really feel seen. Every thumbnail I've ever made is like that fun. Amy's job is very fluid. Sometimes it's literally pulling clothes for a tour and sometimes a lot of repeat outfits in case the artist runs through a lot on stage. Party is a good example of this where like the ripped yeah. tee look, like there's a whole case full of those ripped t-shirts. It just makes it life so much easier for them, especially out on the road. There's no having to put any extra thought into your day, like you know what you're wearing. She helps artists build a style DNA and points them to clothes and cuts and colors that they feel they're best in. Most famously, she cut Morgan Wallen's mullet and her and Morgan very intentionally decided to do that. But she also helps determine if artists want to shift their image into a new direction. You know, Morgan's a good example where like we were full cut off, you know, button ups for a, a very long time of that. Yeah. And that was like a huge part of his branding beside, you know, like the mullet. But as you've seen over the years, that has evolved into kind of like a t-shirt look or whatever. Henleys and it's just a matter of time before you evolve. I mean like any human like let's look back to our junior high years and like where we're at now and like 
most all of us have evolved in some capacity, you know, it's just, I think, a natural part of growth. But what was really interesting about spending a few hours with Amy is that she never emphasized that she wanted to change anything about me. When someone comes, what is your kind of first instinct of what you're trying to figure out from them? I mean, who they already are. Okay. Right? And building off of that, I'm certainly not here, and I think Big Loud as a whole is like, we're not trying to change anybody. And while it might not have been her intention to change my style, I did ask her to help shape it for a future photo shoot. Now, Amy had asked me in advance to show a few images of my closet and to bring in some of my favorite clothes to wear. So we started off our session going through what I had already brought in. It's mm -hmm. comfy, it's lived in, it's like low key. Um... This is my favorite thing I own. Like this I probably wear every day. Yeah. Um, it's giving mountain vibes for sure. Like, and I tried to reiterate, my color is green. I like wearing green. I wear a lot of green, yes. a lot of dark blue. I even put on my ideal green outfit for her to see. These shoes, regular old navy skinny jeans. I don't know. That's just. Although she gravitated to some of the non-green elements in my wardrobe. There were three things that she liked the most. An Aztec Henley, a blue Henley. Love that on you. And then this one flag and anthem distressed pearl snap that I have. But she'd actually gone ahead and pulled a bunch of clothes for me to try. We could also play with like new <gasps> oh, things. Oh, you have other things. Yeah, like I just wanted to like see maybe it's like, do we try new colors on you? We don't so I began my own fashion show and started trying on some of the stuff she'd pulled. BRB. See you back here. My mom would always be like, you don't know until you try it on. <laughs> and I honestly feel like Wow, I just had an epiphany that I think I say that a lot. <laughs> and this is the part of the video that I really learned. It's helpful to have a second set of eyes when clothing shopping. Because Amy put me in a bunch of colors I wouldn't normally gravitate to, namely non-green. Yellow? No, there's no buttoning. Oh, happening. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But, um, I mean... There's unbuttoning happening? There's unbuttoning happening. <laughs> I don't know, from the back it's so weird. It's edgy for me. And it taught me a lot about fit that kind of challenged my assumptions, especially as someone, you know, that wants to appear trimmer than he maybe is. Do you ever wear denim jackets? Um, I've never owned one of them. I feel like you would look great in denim jackets. Yeah. Immediately, yes. Immediately, yes. I, I like, mean, yes. can we just talk about that this just changed the shape of your body? Yeah. Can we? Yes, I feel, I feel great in this. The structure that that jacket holds is kind of what's helping streamline you. Well, it's not like flaring way at the bottom. Well, and you have to think that like things like this are adding literal width. Yeah. Whereas like this is quite thin in the grand scheme of things for a jacket, you know? That's so, that's interesting because I always try to like add width. The sleeve know? roll on you? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Was, she also put me in this blue jacket. Another great jacket look for you. I would roll the sleeve with the dark denim, a black tee under that. And Chef's kiss. If you don't roll your sleeves, you need to start doing that. I think she really wanted to see me in earth tones, namely this dark brown shirt with a cream undershirt. And then a jacket on top. I'm gonna try that. Just give it a swirl. Okay, BRB. Now the cream shirt was pretty tight and what you didn't see off camera is that Amy immediately just grabbed a pair of scissors and cut up the back of my shirt to loosen it out in the front. Nobody even needs to know that. Oh, but I will tell, I mean, I think it's funny. I think it's interesting to know like, like if we, if you need to make something work in the moment, you're gonna make something work in the moment. In the end, we settled on some basics, mostly stuff in the blue and brown color palette. This is like the other, I mean, it's interesting. Like I like these not green ones. As well as that one pearl snap that she said would work well with them. But then the discussion shifted to my hair and Amy really wanted to cut it. Okay. I mean, you have great texture. Like I'm all about curls for the girls. She thought basically, you know, it looked a little square, a little blown out, and could be a little bit tussled and sexier. Well, Nashville made me have curls. I used to have curls. So that's the humidity here. I know. But anyway, if it were me, I would personally recommend like you start like letting curls be part of the- Like let it be a little more. Yeah, I'm happy to just quickly style that for you. Do it. And who am I to say no to the woman that cut the mullet? So Amy taught me how to embrace my curls, add a little texturizing powder in there, and maybe just generally style my hair differently. Yeah. I would just rough dry with your fingers. Yeah, I get it. To keep the texture. And then I had to ask the age old question, should I wear a cowboy hat or not? So wait, cowboy hat or no? Am I, can I, do you think, I don't feel like a cowboy hat guy. I would truly have to see it on you, but something tells me it just feels like I'd be playing dress up. There's a difference between you looking good in a cowboy hat and it being right for you. You would probably look really good. I could see it with your face shape. The thing is, like, 
does it feel genuine? No. no. Does it feel authentic? No. So you're going to look like an idiot because you feel like an idiot. Yeah. I mean, it's, that's like... That's that's the name of the game. Yeah. If you feel like an idiot, you'll look like an idiot. Yeah, because you Great have to feel quote. secure. Great quote. Really? I, I always, like, put them back. Like, I always put them, like, back like that. Stop. But you're saying that's a no. That's a negative. But hey, and, it and could hey. be your thing. could be your thing. Um, it could be my thing. So with new clothes and new hair, now I needed to shoot my album cover for my debut. So next we headed to East Nashville for a photo shoot with Katie Koss. Katie is an extraordinarily well-respected and in-demand photographer in Nashville, and she shot everybody, whether it's Chris Stapleton or Thomas Rhett, or doing tour photography for Florida Georgia Line or John Party, or shooting album covers for Lauren Elena or Asha McBride, not to mention Luke Combs, Casey Musgraves, Dirks Bentley, and Dolly Parton, just to name a few. And she's perhaps most well-known for her elaborate backstage sets at award shows, where she will create these incredible photo sets that are almost pieces of art in their own right. Like this one where she took months to get thousands of used guitar strings and make this elaborate set that stars could pose in while they were in their full red carpet glam. And as you might imagine, the photos that resulted were incredible. Now I certainly did not give Katie that much of a budget. I rented a room for about 70 bucks. We're at a very uh, exclusive, nice motel, ready for a beautiful shoot and told her she was gonna have to be pretty damn scrappy today. So we really did just kind of hit this motel blind, not knowing exactly what we were going to do. Oh, I walked out. I went to bring powder for you because I was like, I know he's not gonna have face, face powder. Well, Shine. it's texturizing powder, but I bet I can make it work. No, don't please put it on your face. Why? I don't know. I do it with gold bond all the time before a video. Really? I'll just like brush gold bond. Oh, well, you're not like shiny right now, but you could get shiny. Oh, yeah. I'll just That's what I meant. use like a sock or something. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, so we talked about what to expect in a photo shoot and how we were planning to get both some theoretical press images and an album cover that day. There's a difference in the press art images that don't necessarily need to reflect the album so much. Those are really just fresh images to be out there in, in the world for any artist announcement. And just to give an example, here would be some press images for Ash McBride's upcoming album. You know, simple pictures that might look good at the top of an article. The album is where there's like more nuance and details that reflect the specific music on the album. And here's what that looks like. Obviously a more complex image. We also talked about what she really has her clients do in a photo shoot to make them feel alive and natural on camera. I always like to give someone an activity or a task and that can literally be, for example, like CMA Awards last year where we had our ode to the Met Gala, the stairs. The act of walking down a stairs is something for somebody to do. There is a natural gait in like how someone might carry themselves. That makes someone more comfortable than theoretically just standing there and doing a pose. So after that, we were off to the races and we shot all kinds of different things. We decided to bank some promotional images at first using some of the different looks that Amy had helped us pull. She really liked the cream shirt and she really liked the lighting from the hotel window. Relax your shoulders. Okay. Yep. We got some selects of that or with the blue jacket just while I was getting comfortable. Oh yeah, she said do that. Yes, that's what we're supposed to do. You know. Katie just kind of flowed with me for an hour as we threw on different outfits. I definitely learned that I'm not that great at posing. I'm, I'm so prone to make YouTube face. I'm so prone to be like. That it's important to look at the light and in general, put my chin down. Chin down. Chin down. Chin down, just there. Chin down. And all throughout the day, Katie would just assume way different angles than I was expecting. Crouched way down lower, shooting through my elbow while I'm looking in a mirror. Maybe take your right hand and like you're like breaking your fingers through your hair like, oh my god, like, not even like you're just, yeah, yeah like that. Photographing me through some of the railing slats at the hotel. She was all about just trying different stuff. And if I had a particular smile or was standing in a particular light, having me go back there and trying it again. I love it. Do you know what I mean? I love it. It's a good greedy face. That's, yeah, I agree. You know, this one kind of feels like my New York Times bestseller author photo. Maybe this simple one would be my Spotify header. Or maybe this one would be my promo image that my label would send out. This is the one my mom really likes. But the main purpose of our day was to get an album cover locked in for a series of episodes. I had some ideas based on the fact that we had written a breakup song about a guy depressed in a hotel 
hotel room eating pizza and watching TV. So I brought a literal bag of garbage from my apartment. So we put some trash around the room, some clothes over the lights. We even ordered a pizza and put it right on the bed. What is it? Price wise? 2018. Here we go. And Katie had mentioned that she likes to put Easter eggs in her photography that matter to the person she's shooting. So we actually draped one of my pieces of merch, a thicket shirt, over my suitcase. And it's just kind of peeking out in some of the photos. For the main image, Katie thought it would look good to have that distressed plaid on. And I get that. It feels kind of like a dude in a breakup. Now this part of the photo shoot I was really excited about. And although I do not think I was the best model, some of the photos that resulted from this shoot are great. Yeah. Is it a vibe? Yeah. Oh, it's such a vibe. This was one option that we thought of for the cover. This was a moodier option we thought of for the cover. But ultimately, the full zoomed out version with that little bit of a thicket shirt, with a pizza box, with me looking out the window holding a beer instead of holding a remote, it just felt cooler than all the others. And when I asked my friends which photos resonated with them, nine out of 10 all said that one. So with the photo shoot done for my mythical album, that was supposed to be the end of the video. This was the part where I was gonna reflect on my experience with all of these professionals and how crazy it was to glimpse into their working world and see how good they are at what they do. But then this all took a somewhat surprising turn when Ernest called me and was like, dude, I think the song we wrote is good. You should cut it. And I was like, Haha, ha, that's funny. What do you mean I should cut it? And he was like, work with Chandler, who is his steel guitar player and has some cuts on the new Bailey Zimmerman record and is generally like a production whiz. And I was like, are you being serious? And he was being serious. So Chandler Walters and I linked up a few days later and I laid down a vocal. I'm stuck in a never ending season of Survivor Mexico. And he built a track for a series of episodes. I almost want you to say like, the episodes like in a like deeper voice yeah yeah yeah, yeah 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 i'm in like, i'm in yeah i'm in i think you're right yeah sitting here having me a series of episodes <laughs> I, I like that a lot yeah. and then over the next few weeks we just kind of kicked back and forth ideas on production i would send him very strange videos like this this is what's in my brain as i was singing that song just now Having me a series of episodes, trying to let you go, stuck in a never ending season of Survivor Mexico. I'm here in this room. He would lay down some groovy steel parts. And at one point we broke a string on a Sunday and didn't know what to do and called in a big favor from Kurt Ozon who plays steel for Luke Combs. And I went over to his house to get a replacement. Strings. Thank you. <laughs> Needed these. Really, I was calling in all the favors from people who don't need to spend any time working with me for this video. And together we crafted a real song. Series of episodes is an actual song co-written by me and Ernest produced by Chandler Walters and available for streaming everywhere right now as you're watching this video. The cover image is that favorite one that I shot with Katie. The clothes I'm wearing in it were the ones kind of shaped by Amy. And in general, I think we captured a little bit of a beachy, humorous jam. So uh, why don't we go ahead and listen? Rip that antenna off the TV. Too much static on my mind I've left it on since that girl left me Killing beers and wasting time Ooh, and I ain't ate or showered in days And there's pizza boxes all over the place But I'm having me a series of episodes Trying to let you go Stuck in a never ending season of Survivor Mexico. I'm here in this room, 422. I'm channel surfing while you're out, catching waves in the deep, deep blue. With somebody new, but I'm just sitting here having me a series of episodes. Well, this damn sure ain't no love boat. I ain't Jim and you ain't Pam. But I'm clinging to this remote. 
And I'm running through the office once again You got me like, ooh And I still haven't showered in days And I'm tired of watching Bobby Flay But I'm having me a series of episodes Trying to let you go I'm stuck in a never-ending season Of Survivor Mexico I'm here in this room for 22 I'm channel surfing while you're out Catching waves in the deep, deep blue With somebody new But I'm just sitting here Having me a series of episodes Ooh, who needs a bridge When you got a broken heart And Dodge Drivings and Dives and SVU And Love is Blind And Who Wants to Be a Millionaire And Jersey Shore And at this point it's probably pretty clear That I'm having me a series of episodes Trying to let you go I'm stuck in a never-ending season A survivor Mexico I'm here in this room for 22 I'm channel surfing while you're out Catching waves in the deep, deep blue With somebody new But I'm just sitting here Having me a series of episodes I, I like that a lot, yeah, yeah. but then I made a weird sound after. I was like trying to just like, I was like. Mm. So there we go. The experiment has come to a conclusion. Did I become a country star in 24 hours? Well, no. It took then an extra month to make the song. Then it takes a while to edit the video. It takes a while to upload the song to streaming. There's a lot that goes into this whole assembly line. And in general, I think I left this video realizing, yes, there is a formula to success. There are certain things that sound good, there are certain things that look good, and there are best practices like there are in any industry, but all of the creative people I worked with really wanted me to be me. They wanted the song, the imagery, the fashion, to be me. And maybe that's my takeaway from this whole experiment is that the machine can do a lot of cool things and it's not so machine-like. In fact, you can harness its power to build something great or at least good enough for a YouTube novelty song. But anyway, I won't review my own music. <laughs> this is all just a funny experiment, but I certainly had a good time doing it and I'm so grateful to Ernest and Amy Georgiulis and Katie Koss and Chandler Walters for all of their time spent helping me make this video. So if you want to listen to the song, you can go do that on Spotify or Apple Music, or I'll probably post a whole YouTube video just of the audio here. And you can also get some series of episode merch on my newly relaunched merch site. Thought we could do some like fake tour merch for the episodes tour. And I will have everyone in this video linked down below so you can go give them a ton of love and follow them because they're the best. I know this was a different kind of video for me. I was trying to think what would Mr. Beast do if he were in Nashville and this is what resulted. But if you liked it, I'd love for you to give it a like or send it to a friend that you would think is interested in kind of a peek behind the curtain of the Nashville industry. If you're new here, think about subscribing to the channel. I talk about country music on here and there's a ton of cool stuff in the pipeline. So hope you guys enjoyed this and uh, I hope you're not having a series of episodes. All right, guys. Love you. Bye. But I'm having me a series of episodes Trying to let you go I'm stuck in a never-ending season Of Survivor Mexico I used to have like the giant hipster beard, like the flared mustache. I can I, so see that. Um, when I moved out of New York, I was like a goody two-shoes in New York and had like all like wool slacks and button downs. And I like to be the square in among hipsters and I like to be the hipster among squares. I totally resonate with um, that.